The mailbox connector is new for Faxination 2016 and unique because it's the only Faxination host connector that cannot be used to send or receive fax or mobile messages. Instead, the mailbox connector is dedicated to host-to-host -to -host routing. It can be configured to monitor one or more Exchange or Office 365 mailboxes. When a new email arrives that includes a file attachment, that file attachment is routed through the kernel to any inbound capable Faxination host. Although it can work with multiple mailboxes, the most efficient use is through a single mailbox and subfolders via email server routing rules. Within the configurator for the mailbox connector, in addition to the general and kernel contract tabs, is the mailboxes tab. On the general tab of the add mailbox configurator, we have the ability to enable and disable a configured mailbox. This is useful when troubleshooting or testing alternative configurations. Name is the friendly name for this configuration. This name will appear in the mailbox connector trace when this mailbox configuration is active. A description field is provided for administrator reference. It's not used by vaccination. You can also set the interval between checks of the mailbox folder for new messages. The default is 20 seconds. On the mailbox tab, the email address is the name of the mailbox that will be monitored. The monitor folder field defines the path to the folder that will be monitored. Folders common to all Exchange mailboxes may be entered automatically using the Custom button. Common folders include Inbox, Deleted Items, Drafts, Junk Mail, Outbox, and Sent Items. And here you provide the user address and credentials for full mailbox access. The Recipient tab is used to configure where the detected file attachments will be routed. First, we can assign a friendly name for this routing recipient. The vaccination host connector that will be used for delivery. The type of address to use with that host connector. The delivery address, in this case a URL for a SharePoint document library. And the system address to use when routing to this host connector when required. The Message tab allows you to configure which file attachments are allowed by the recipient host connector. In this example, we're routing to a SharePoint document library, which has no restriction on what kind of binary file data can be stored. If the recipient host supports metadata, such as SharePoint columns, you may configure that here. In this example, the SharePoint document library that we're routing to includes a metadata column called Origin. That column will be populated with the word vaccination, which is hard-coded here. Vaccination message variables may also be used as metadata values. On the Delivery tab, we can set the options related to the successful routing of a message coming from the mailbox connector. You can opt to generate a notification for each successful routing operation and deliver it to a mailbox. You'll probably want to avoid this when the route is expected to process high volumes of messages, but it may be useful in some applications. Next, you can choose to mark the message read and leave it in the folder. Mark the message read and then delete it, which will move it to the deleted items folder. Or mark the message read and move it to a specific folder within the same mailbox. If this folder does not exist, it will be created the first time this route processes a successful message. You may also choose to modify the subject of the message. By default, we add a delivered colon prefix to the original subject. The non-delivery tab contains the same options. In this case, notifying an email address of a routing failure is probably a good idea. As before, you can choose to mark the message read and leave it in the folder. Mark the message read and then delete it. Or mark the message read and move it to a specific folder within the same mailbox. For non-deliveries, by default, we will add a failed colon prefix to the original subject. 
As stated previously, the Faxination Mailbox Connector can be configured to monitor multiple mailboxes. However, in hosted environments such as Office 365, multiple service account mailboxes would be cost prohibitive. For this reason, most configurations will monitor subfolders below the inbox, and email server-based rules will be configured to automatically sort incoming messages into the monitored folders based on your criteria. In this example, we have created four mailbox connector routes and four email server-based rules to distribute new emails into the four monitored folders. The OPEX rule will trigger when the email message has an attachment and the subject line includes the word OPEX. It will then move the message into the OPEX folder where it will be processed by faxination. Similar rules are created for the remaining three subfolders. The Faxination SMTP stack is not technically a host connector. It appears in the Fenestre Server Administrator in the Server section and runs as part of the kernel process. This was implemented so that SMTP communications would always be available to Faxination, regardless of which host connectors were installed. The SMTP stack can be used in non-exchange environments or environments where the email system is hosted or otherwise restricted. It's great for interfacing with legacy software applications or non-Windows systems since SMTP is both a universal and well-established standard. The SMTP stack is used for Office 365 integrations, where foreign connectors for the Faxination MS Exchange connector are unsupported. It uses the same scan strings as the Faxination Universal Output connector, but for this connector, the scan strings are optional. The number of unique SMTP send and receive connections that you may configure is controlled by licensing. In the Fenestre Server Administrator, under Servers, you'll find the Faxination SMTP stack. The configuration of the SMTP stack is primarily within the send and receive connectors. The words send and receive are from the perspective of the Faxination server, so a send connector delivers inbound messages to users, and a receive connector accepts outgoing messages from users. First we'll look at a send connector. On the general tab, you may enable and disable this send connector without losing its configuration. This is useful for troubleshooting and migrations. Define a friendly name for this send connector. The hello name is the fully qualified domain name to use when making a connection to another SMTP server. You may also configure the domain name that will be used to build the reply address for inbound messages. This does not have to be an actual domain name, but it can help your users recognize messages coming from the vaccination server. The from address is the address that the SMTP stack will use when submitting inbound messages. Context allows you to populate the above fields with presets that are appropriate in specific situations, such as when communicating with SAP via SMTP. When choosing a context, some values will revert to their defaults and other values will be enforced. It's best to set the context first before configuring the other tabs. The address space tab is used to configure relative costs for multiple domains. When a destination address matches multiple address spaces, the domain configured with the lowest cost will be used. The network tab is used to configure whether the SMTP server should deliver inbound messages by using DNS queries to determine the IP address of the responsible server, or if it should rely on smart host or relay to deliver the message instead. Multiple relay servers may be configured for redundancy and will be tried in order from top to bottom. You may also move servers up and down the list to adjust their priority. When required, you may use authentication to identify this send connector to the remote mail server. When basic authentication is enabled, you may also enable the transport layer security option that will prevent the credentials from being transmitted in plain text, which is a potential security risk. The Messages tab allows you to configure how the outbound message body and binary attachments will be encoded and structured. 
The encoding method and structure chosen depend on the requirements of the receiving SMTP clients. Automated systems in particular may require specific encoding schemes and prefer single part or multi part messages. The Scripts tab defines optional scripts that can be run on outbound messages. ECB scripts can be used to change the properties of an outbound message. FMF scripts can be used to modify both the properties and the attachments of an outbound message. When you don't need to modify the attachments of a message, a custom ECB script is more efficient. There are no send connector scripts configured by default. Now we'll look at receive connectors. For each receive connector, you may enable or disable the configuration without losing it. Define a friendly name for this receive connector. The welcome field is the fully qualified domain name that will be used in response to a hello command from a remote SMTP server. You may set the maximum message size for this receive connector. Messages that exceed this size will be rejected at the SMTP level. And as with the send connectors, the context dropdown allows you to populate the above fields with presets that are appropriate in specific situations. The Network tab allows you to set the IP addresses and port numbers that will be monitored for incoming SMTP connections. Port 25 is the default port for all SMTP communications, but you can specify another port to meet certain deployment goals or for firewall traversal. You may also define specific IP addresses or ranges of IP addresses that are allowed to make connections to the vaccination SMTP stack. Connection attempts from outside these ranges will be rejected with no response. On the Authentication tab, you may force the incoming SMTP connections to use transport layer security to encrypt all data being transferred. When TLS is enabled, you must specify a local server certificate. And you can choose to require SMTP clients to authenticate themselves when they attempt a connection. Incoming connections that cannot be authenticated will be rejected. The Messages tab is used to set the override cover sheet or template to be used with this receive connector. The cover sheet or template configured for the sender in the vaccination address manager will only be used when these fields are blank. You can allow the sending client to specify their notifications on a per-message basis when the client supports that feature. Otherwise, the standard vaccination notification options may be configured. The Routing tab allows you to associate virtual domains with the message types that are available on your server. For instance, the virtual domain fax.sys is not automatically associated with fax messages until that association is explicitly defined here. The Address Mappings tab allows you to modify SMTP email addresses. Once modified, the new address will be used for notifications when notifications are enabled. You may also configure send notifications to be delivered through an entirely different host, such as web services, printers, or the exchange connector. Just as with the send connectors, the Scripts tab allows you to specify scripts to be run against all outgoing SMTP messages. Scanout.vbs is configured by default and is used to parse scan strings from the message body and then map those scan strings to vaccination messaging options before passing the message to the kernel. The filtering tab provides a method of authorizing SMTP servers to connect to the vaccination SMTP stack. New connections will always be added to this list and the new client behavior setting will decide whether the newly added connection is enabled or disabled. SMTP servers that are not enabled are not authorized to communicate with the vaccination SMTP stack. The message will never reach the vaccination kernel and the sender's messaging permissions will not be checked. The cleanup button will delete all of the disabled SMTP clients. The Advanced tab allows you to set the number of worker threads that control how many SMTP jobs can be processed in parallel. 
Increasing this value will limit the amount of time available on the processor for other threads and may have an adverse effect on performance. The default of 10 is a good choice in most environments. The get interval is the time in seconds between consecutive checks of the queue for messages that must be processed by the vaccination SMTP stack. The retry interval sets the amount of time in seconds before a rejected message is resubmitted to the SMTP server. This behavior depends upon the type of response code included in the original rejection. This is configurable using rules defined in the SMTP retry.dat file. See the Faxination 2016 Administrator's Guide for more information. The SMTP stack is typically used in conjunction with the configuration of one or more virtual domains. An email client submits a vaccination message to their mail server with a virtual domain as part of the email address. The mail server then performs a DNS query to determine the IP address of the virtual domain. DNS responds with the IP address of the vaccination server and the mail server makes an SMTP connection to that IP address where the vaccination SMTP stack is listening on port 25 by default.